Cinity, your digital cinema tech resource, supported by B and H and CVP. With me today is Richard Taylor from FCPX.tv. Richard, you have been following Final Cut Pro since it was before Final Cut Pro 10. Yes. Uh, since day one. And from what I understand, it's still your favorite NLE. So I feel like today is a, a big day for you. Well, I have a t- I have a top 100 list of things I want to see in Final Cut Pro. And it's what it started with Final Cut Pro 5, not 10.5. Okay. I I had a top 50 list at from Final Cut Pro 5. The number one feature request from me all these years has been a scrolling timeline. (laughs) And today Apple announced it. Today, today is my day. I mean, this is <laughs> now. Look, this is going to be this is going to be controversial because people are, you know, I, I know I've got fifty things on Facebook about this. You know, the, it first off, it wasn't released today, right? As far as I know, right? Just announced. It's supposed just, to. Come it was later announced. this month. So, later this month. Or later this year. Later this month. Okay. Is, like, good. Good. Mm-hmm. Good. So anyway, let's start with that. The scrolling timeline. Look, it was the only modern NLE that doesn't have a scrolling timeline. Logic, the other pro app that Apple has, has two scrolling timelines. Okay. You have an overview scrolling timeline, and then you have an audio file scrolling timeline, and both of them will scroll at the same time. Hmm. There you different go. zoom levels, different places. That, so it has two scrolling timelines. And you may not know this, Motion has a scrolling timeline. <laughs> there you go. And Final Cut's timeline just scrolled right off the screen. <laughs> off the screen. It scrolls <laughs> off the screen. I made a video of that when it when 10.0 was out of the, the playhead scrolling off the screen. And there's an arrow that points to it off the screen and the big question mark comes up. It's got like 8,000 views or 10,000 <laughs> views or something like that over the years. Uh, so well, that's so so that's a, that feels like a pretty fundamental thing that Apple just got around to getting around. Uh, is there anything else with the desktop release that you thought was interesting that you heard today? Because you're actually um, down there for the uh, FCP Summit. Uh, in that's Korea. correct. That's correct. Well, let's talk about the scrolling timeline a little bit more. One of the problems they've one of the problems they've had was what do they do with the with updating the waveforms? Yes, because it okay. live draws the waveforms. As it's scrolling, that's been solved. It oh. works. The waveforms have been re- reworked with the scrolling timeline. They update when you stop it. There's a couple of other features about the scrolling timeline. And that we were shown, I don't know if it's been discussed. I haven't got to the Apple article. I just saw that it was posted, the, the newsroom article about yeah. that. So we 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 saw it in action. We saw that there's, a, there's another couple options that they have, which is pretty cool. There's a couple of other things. They've made a refinement to mask tracking or tracking a mask or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I think it's it's got a step up in accuracy. Maybe it's it's AI or machine learning. I can't remember what it was they showed us. Yes, there's but some machine learning object tracker. Ab- object tracker. tracker. So it's been it's stepped up. It's more accurate. It's faster, et, et cetera. And there's a couple of other things. I haven't gone over, like I said, I haven't looked at the article. I just virtually got back in my room one half hour ago. But oh. here's the thing that I want to emphasize to people. This was, as far as the Creative Summit attendees, was the way it should should happen. Apple corporate announced Logic Pro earlier in the day, 10.8. Right. Okay. They did not announce Final Cut Pro until we saw the demo live in person then it was announced on the Apple website. So the team 
whatever they did, work their magic. It says, no, don't, don't. When you post logic, that's fine. Don't post Final Cut Pro until we tell you it's time to go or they had a time worked out or whatever. So yeah, it so wasn't posted. That yeah. they're, that, because uh, a lot, there's been a lot of concern that Apple's not giving Final Cut the love that its users feel it deserves. I don't know if that's been alleviated with today's update, but, mm-hmm. but, as far as, I mean, I know I'm going to get pushback on this because the scrolling timeline, I'm known for that, okay? <laughs> I'm known for the scrolling timeline issue. So people are going to think that, hey, that's all he wanted. That's all he cares about. No, it's not. There's other things. I have a top 100 list, okay? <laughs> top 100 list of things. So, but I am ecstatic at the scrolling timeline. I do audio podcasts. I do the Final Cut Pro radio podcast. Typically, I'm dealing with an hour and a half, two hours worth of audio, okay? I need that audio waveform. I don't want to keep doing this with the mouse like I have to do with Final Cut. Back and forth, back and forth, zooming in and out. No, I edit in Logic. The playhead stays in the center and the timeline scrolls underneath of it. Yeah, so that's that's to me that's really good that they're at least looking at these fundamentals because there's always it seems like with Apple releases there's some stuff on fundamentals and then there's some stuff that's you know kind of a new whiz bang kind yes. of feel. So it looks like they paid attention to fundamentals on this scrolling timeline. They also uh, had some stuff to say about new features for connected clips. Did you get a chance to? see any of that yes they did demo that and i think it it operates it operates like a compound clip it but it but doesn't jump off the screen like when you double click a compound clip you go to a new timeline right that has no relationship to the current timeline this seems to be like a compound clip that goes the sec the, the secondary storyline but it expands right in in place the way it's the way the compound clips should right because that's been so, a lot of that's been a lot of concern that you're out of your timeline. You're not seeing the context. It doesn't so, make any sense. You jump to another timeline. You have no context of where the heck you are in the main timeline. It does. That's just you know one of those things been aggravating. Yeah. So this is so these are kind of features that I mean you use minute by minute every day, and they don't. They're not quite um, you know AI features that we talked about, like with object tracker yeah. that's getting a lot of you know attention and so on and so right. forth. Um, but practically speaking, um, this may help make Final Cut an even faster NLE uh, for people who that, that tends to be one of the main reasons that people want to gravitate toward it. There's, there's a th- well. First off, this is ten point seven point zero because hmm. it's the very first iteration of ten point seven, not the final version of ten point seven. This is not the end. We're at the very beginning of ten seven. This this to me is a good start. I I so my Final Cut Pro. I have two webs two things that are listed on Apple's website. Number one is fcpx.tv, and number two is my Final Cut Pro Radio podcast. It's going, it's going to start this ninth year in January. Mm. They're both listed as resources for Final Cut Pro. But one of the things that they when they describe my website is Final Cut Pro commentary Mm. because that's what I do. I do commentary on Final Cut Pro. You don't, don't call me a fanboy, Okay. (laughs) I'm not, I'm a proponent. I'm a proponent, but I don't follow it blindly when there's places to be criticized or constructively and professionally. I'm talking about not, you know, going off half cocked and, oh, I hate this and I'm going to, you know, people say, oh, that's it. I'm jumping to Resolve or I'm jumping to Premiere. Listen, you can use more than one NLE. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just because it's not a zero sum game. I use three. I use Final Cut primarily, Black Magic Resolve. I really like it a lot secondarily. And I use LumaFusion on the iPad, which is a really, really powerful NLE. Quickly about LumaFusion. Runs on an iPad, an older iPad, does not have, have the most modern one. Runs on an iPhone. Final Cut Pro for the iPad does not run on an iPhone. It runs on Android and it runs on Chromebooks. 
And it uh, runs on a Mac now, right? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm yeah. sorry. Yes, yes, it runs on a Mac. I forgot about that. <laughs> With the whole iPad app running on a Mac thing. So yeah. LumaFusion is uh, probably the most mature. Yes. Mobile NLE, and it shows. Uh, yes. So I think that brings us to kind of our final thing. Apple mentioned some updates for the iPad version of Final Cut Pro. Was there yeah. anything that caught your attention on that well, front? They, they they were missing a voiceover tool from the beginning. <laughs> they added a voiceover tool. Okay, so that's it. That's once again, this is the beginning of the Final Cut for the iPad. The more I see it in action, the more I like it. Now, but that doesn't mean I'm not gonna, I'm not going to subscribe to it because I don't like subscriptions, especially from a company like Apple, who's the richest company in the world. They can't at least offer people a, you know, one-time purchase price. Mm -hmm. Even if they said, listen, even if they said, okay, $49, we'll give you two years of updates. At the end of the two years, we're going to charge for the next major update or whatever. Right. People would like that better. Because Apple, does Apple need $4.99 a month? <laughs> I mean, really, uh, it's we'll just, it. <laughs> it, well, they we will. And, and yeah. here's the thing about the, the, the iPad version. Four ninety month, four ninety nine a month is very reasonable, and you can start and stop as many times as you want. You can just run it for a month, take off for a month. Apple is so easy to stop a subscription. Yeah, it's it's the simplest. You know, you don't care where do I go to where I know. Just go to the subscriptions, cancel. It'll run to the, the you know till your till your month runs out, and then it won't auto renew on you. So it's very easy, and at four ninety nine is certainly a good price. So nothing against that. But the more I see it, I have to say, the more I like it. Yeah, it's, you can it's, it. it's a, it is a, um, it's a, it feels like the first multi touch oriented NLE. Yes, you know, and it's they, they've got they've got some got some things in there that are more oriented to maybe a more modern interface than LumaFusion, but in a lot of ways. Um, I think they've got some catching up to do with with yeah. LumaFusion as well. <laughs> oh well, well, let me let me do since we're talking about scrolling timeline, I'm pretty sure I saw Logic had a scrolling timeline on the iPad today. Mm -hmm. Now I don't know if it had it in the past. Now, I know it has it on the Mac because I've been using it for years, but I'm pretty sure I saw Logic had a scrolling timeline on the iPad version. That means the only thing that doesn't have a scrolling timeline is Final Cut on the iPad. Ah, interesting. Okay, well, yeah, very you know, interesting. we'll see. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> Obviously, they're listening. Well, Richard, thank you so much again. Absolutely, for the time and appreciate you, and hope to talk to you again in the future. Sounds good. Thanks for being in touch. Bye. Bye. Bye.